Hi and welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to show you how you can automatically assign layers in Lightburn. Without further ado, let's get into it. Unfortunately, my laser module uh, stopped working and I'm still trying to figure out uh, um, what is going on with it. Uh, in the meantime, I've ordered um, the new 40 watt 2 diode laser module, which offers uh, 15 watts of um, optical power output. So that's going to be an upgrade and I'll suggest you to stay tuned if you want to see that coming up. So in the meantime, I'm going to show you something that does not require my uh, laser to be working. If you've seen my previous video on uh, Lightburn, um, you should know that uh, one of the uh, unique features about Lightburn compared to the other software is the possibility of breaking down your project into different layers, which are contradistinguishable through these uh, colors over here. And then you can basically assign different uh, parameters to each individual layer so you can basically uh, engrave or launch a complex project which you, where you have different uh, levels of engraving uh, and cutting in one go. So um, if you recall from my video uh, the way you, you go about that when you import a project from another software you are basically um, breaking it down and then you can select uh, all of the geometries that's supposed to for instance be cut or engraved or filled and you assign the different colors okay uh, in a similar way you would do it within the software itself if you do some uh, uh, design inside of it you can then assign the different uh, layers to each one of the colors. But another uh, interesting feature of Lightburn is the fact that it can actually recognize projects that uh, have already uh, some kind of layering system or colors assigned to it. So for instance if you import uh, projects directly from uh, your Inkscape you could have assigned directly colors into Inkscape and then Lightburn will automatically pick that colors and try to match the closest color within the color palette into Lightburn. Uh, in a similar way, if you are an AutoCAD user or similar type of software, you know that uh, um, this kind of software is used a layering system similar to what you see in Lightburn and you can assign the color to each individual layer. So you could basically um, once again create projects and to have colors assigned directly into the uh, you know source uh, software so that you don't have to then deal with breaking it down into Lightburn and to, to, to do all of the that kind of configuration. Lightburn remembers your settings the settings that you assigned to the previous instance of uh, uh, Lightburn so if you had the cutting setting for instance for the red or engraving setting for the green uh, that's gonna be all in memory so you don't have to type that in once again so let me now show you very quickly what's the workflow within Lightburn so let's create a few different uh, rectangle okay and let's then assign different colors so you can then click escape so you can then come over here you can assign the blue assign the red, can assign the green and so on and as you can see here on the layer space on the right uh, side of the software you have all of your layers assigned okay and you can see that you have the various parameters settled here you can see a small preview if you go under the layer space you can see basically this uh, six parameters so you can click in any one of them and you can see you have the speed the power the number of counts and so on okay so in a similar way you could come over to Inkscape and you can assign colors to different objects 
okay so you will now click the select tool click the click the geometries one by one and then assign your color don't forget if it's just the outline to hold down the shift key so that's gonna be red that's gonna be blue uh, that can be green and let's say this one can be this color over here okay so I can then save the document <clears throat> then you can come over to Lightburn you can open okay now click on all the file types so all supported as you can see here now I have my test SVG test SVG one give it a open uh, say no so you don't save the settings and as you can see that's exactly what we drew in Inkscape and the color has been automatically assigned from the software now um, you will notice that if uh, let's ungroup this one so right click ungroup okay if for instance you wanted this one to be your fourth color and not the twelfth color that means that the color that you assign it's actually closer to the twelfth color than is than it is to the fourth so uh, an handy way to go around that at least when you first set up the things then it's gonna be much easier uh, if you have a color picker you can uh, basically read the color here and then assign it accordingly so I have a color picker from uh, Power Toys and I have a shortcut key assigned which is Windows Shift C and as you can see I have this color over here if I now hover into my color you can see that I have the hexadecimal code there so I can click this will automatically copy the hexadecimal value uh, into the clipboard if you want uh, the value to be in some other color space type like RGB or HSL you can uh, basically copy from there but I'm okay with the hexadecimal so I can go back into Inkscape can select the geometry that I want it to be actually in the fourth color and I can come under fill and stroke stroke paint you can see here I have the RGBA which still uh, takes the hexadecimal control P click enter now let's give it a save let's go back into light barn file open all supported files once again test one then give it a open let's cancel not to save anything and now as you can see let's ungroup this one as you can see our rectangle it's been correctly assigned to the fourth color which is what we wanted okay and as you can see uh, the colors has been correctly assigned and all the parameters that we use in our previous uh, instance of light barn that means the parameters that we used in the previous project okay now in a similar manner you could use AutoCAD okay let's create a new drawing okay and let's first create a few layers so we can create for instance the, the cut layer then we could create the engrave layer then we can create the fill layer and so on and so forth then you can come over to the color and to assign the various color let's say color one uh, let's say color the green one and then the fill let's uh, say uh, what was this kind of color over here I think that's gonna be our fourth color okay and now let me get rid of this grid over here let's draw something simple or a rectangle and let's do it in this way so let's now assign to part of them cut and uh, some of them can be an engrave and some of them can be a fill okay now I can um, remember that Lightburn recognizes uh, um, dot dxf files not dwg so we have to save this as dxf file so go over to save us 
on the file type drop down select the latest version of your uh, of available of DXF which is the 13th and so let, let's call this one test test one give it a save so let's go into lightburn open again all of this all of supported uh, format there we go let me see where it stays test one there we go open that up not don't save anything and as you can see our colors has been correctly assigned let's scale this down correctly into our working area so everything was correctly assigned uh, the interesting with AutoCAD is that you can actually create uh, your personalized template so let me show you that up so let's close this one do not save so go to the drop down next to new and you can see over here I have this light barn layers DWT which is the extension for the template so once this is launched you can go over to the layer manager and you can see I have already the layers uh, created so you I can uh, work out my project directly uh, into this template and I have my layers um, ready to be used so I don't have to do the, the job uh, twice now I'm ready so um, if I will need more layer settings from this color pa palette I can then basically update the template to include more of them um, but for my personal experience I haven't ever been using more than five to six different layers in a single project so I think that all of the layers that you got over here they are more than enough for pretty much anything okay and that's how you do that I hope you found this video helpful if you have any comment leave them below if you liked it click the thumb up button below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more video like this one. Ciao for now.